Welcome to 7 Tips for CRO Program Success. I'll also be sharing a framework to help you test and learn. So throughout this, you'll be picking up many tips and ideas. Some of these ideas might be ones that will help boost your CRO program. There may even be a key idea which saves your program from stopping or slowing down or struggling. So let's move on. Quick introduction about me. I'm Chris Marsh, a freelancer under Dash of CX. And for 10 years, I've been working within data and UX. And then for five years, I've been co-running or running CRO programs. I focus on e-commerce stores, I help my clients learn about their audience so they can split test and improve customer experiences, which in turn, of course, can help improve conversion rates and profits. So here we have it, seven tips for CRO program success. Starting off, I love this tip. This has been called the most important law in data analysis. Wow, I wish I heard this back when I started. Are you ready? This is Twyman's law. Any figure that looks interesting or different is usually wrong. Think about that. Quite a bold statement, right? An interesting or different figure is usually wrong. Now this is great because it shows us how we need to be skeptical. Um, and I actually translate this in my head as when data is surprising, I should be skeptical. I should check the data. So if your eyebrows raise when you're looking at data, you're like, whoa, you know, then perhaps it's time to be skeptical. And this actually pops up all the time as surprising. So this really helps when, you, when you're skeptical, you can check the data. Sometimes there's an issue that could be a bug in the solution or a bug in the tracking. And if you're getting bad data, this really helps you uncover that. Number two, it's so important to build and keep momentum in a CRO program. So it's even harder to start and to get that momentum. So I recommend starting with small tests. Keep them very simple. Help the devs get used to it, um, helps get buy-in. Perhaps you could even think about a test that doesn't have high impact, just so that there's no politics or uh, unsureness around the test. Uh, so it's simple and in, you know, expecting a groundbreaking result. It's just to roll it out and get used to what's happening. Um, now, interestingly enough, I came across this awesome book. This is a career book uh, called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And he was talking about something which resonated with me here because it applies directly. So he says, he talks about small bets and how they're really useful in your career. He says, you know, you run a small experiment, think of it as a small bet. It's bite-sized, so it's easy to run. After just a month or two, you get concrete feedback and you can learn and carry on. He says, keep making small bets and eventually one will pay off huge. I read that and I thought, wow, this is what, how I visualize uh, starting a CRO program. And then when you continue to run one, it's, it still applies, still make sure, we still try to make sure we're running small tests alongside perhaps some bigger ones so that we keep the momentum going. And number three, test one concept and you'll never lose. So here, uh, the point of this is if you test too many different uh, concepts or theories then you never actually know which one moved the needle in which way so even if you the test boosts your KPI it's not it's only useful for that one instance of a boost it's really hard to actually move on from there and do more of the same because we don't know what, it's really hard to unpick and know uh, what helped or what didn't help so the way I like to think of this is a variation should answer one question. Uh, my framework also applies directly to this. It helps guide this concept. I'll show my framework uh, halfway through this talk. And number four, log your learnings. Of course, this is super important, but if you're not sure why, think about it. In a year or two years time, if someone else joins your CRO program, 
And wouldn't it be great for them to be able to uh, get stuck in and, and read what's happened, read what's worked, what hasn't worked, and get the lay of the land? Yeah. But that's also us in one or two years' time. We still need to do that. We still need to look back. Um, so this data can really help with new tests and brainstorming tests. We need to consider this past data and it will really help future-proof our CRO programs. Number five, when a test finishes, we need to, it's a great brainstorming opportunity. We need to think, can we iterate? Um, so sometimes we won't iterate, you know, if there was only one solution um, or it's you just it's just clear that it's not going anywhere. There's nowhere to go. But often there is opportunity, there's more opportunity. So think about it. If a test wins, that's amazing. And if we've tested carefully, we now know what resonates with the audience and what made a difference. So this is a great chance to brainstorm and look and look at our past research, look at our website, our store, and think, how can we apply this learning? How can we do this elsewhere on the site? Or can we do this even better or even bigger and bolder? So that's really, really powerful. So it can, it can inspire two, three or four new test ideas, which are data backed. Um, and on the flip side, if the test lost, well, perhaps it was the solution. Perhaps it sucked. Um, should we try a different solution? Would it be easy to try a different solution, which is still familiar to the audience? So I, I like this because it means that we have to be willing for our CRO roadmaps to be flexible. And they don't have to be super planned for like six or 12 months. You just sort of have to roll with the flow a bit and be willing to move a new test in when needed. And number six of seven, QA, quality assurance. Uh, I recommend spending a lot of uh, effort on QA. It's so important. We need to QA thoroughly because there will be bugs. Honestly, devs can't get 100% of bugs. Um, they look at things differently. They might not be used to testing uh, the experience on so many devices and such. Um, so yeah, get real devices. It doesn't cost much. Um, it probably take you one to two hours to do a very thorough QA. You can create your own checklist to start with so you're not missing any steps. And it's super important. Uh, another big tip here, this is interesting because this doesn't appear in uh, documentation of testing tools, but this is very, very important. If your test happens to be a redirect test and you're creating a new page, now it's so important to make sure the new page has a rel canonical tag in the HTML head. So ask your, your dev to look into this and add this into the new page. It basically tells search engines that this isn't the original page. This isn't, uh, that they shouldn't index this page. And then it points them to the original page. Otherwise, search engines will index this page and it's a nightmare for SEO. Once that's in the index, it's actually very hard to get out. Okay, moving on. Final tip here, PR your CRO program. You can think of this as beating the value drum. So I recommend highlighting the value regularly and keeping it short and simple. I've got an example here of what I popped into Slack and I frame it as well at the beginning, value delivered, bomb, bomb, bomb. And it helps stakeholders understand uh, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and that we are creating this value. So, they, and they can easily reshare this if they like. And this can help keep momentum. It could even help you build your CRO program. Perhaps if you need more dev resources, you can add it to this and say, hey, if we add an extra dev or this amount of hours, then we can expect this increase in performance. Okay, and now we're on to the second half of this talk. We're going to look at a framework to help test and learn, and see a real world example of an experiment and how the framework guided us, and continued to guide us, so that we got to a great end result after an iteration. So let's, let's see it in action. 
very quickly just to touch on why you know why should we test and learn why bother can't we just test random test ideas well you can but they'll probably have a lower win rate perhaps of 10 percent and then you might end up running out of ideas <laughs> where, are you, where where do we go there from there this is really strategic great way to help test and move in the right direction and then iterate or move on and it just guides you really well to, if you test and learn you'll build great strategic business knowledge other competitors won't have this knowledge think about that this is high accuracy knowledge that you can learn about your audience and then this knowledge will really help you when it comes to brainstorming new test ideas or iterations. So this is the framework, uh, I've called it the PQ framework for CRO. It's very intuitive, uh, helps simplify the process of creating a test, which will help you test and learn, which will in turn help you get win rates of about 20 to 30% of, of tests winning and you'll be learning about your audience along the way. So the PQ framework, I've called it PQ because the P and the Q are the most important areas and the most unique. So we're making this, uh, we're starting with a problem, a customer problem that's backed by data. So it's a problem focused approach. So we're actually trying to resolve real world problems. That sounds like a good way to boost customer experiences, which in turn will boost conversions. And for Q, we have a question, what do you want to know? So that's intuitive. We, what are we asking? What do we want to find out? And it's important that we ask one question for one variation. And then S, the fourth item is solution. So here we go to the wider team. We can ask for input, design ideas, solution ideas. Again, uh, one variation should loop back and answer one question for this test. The fourth item is measure. Of course, we need to set what we're going to measure before we start. So these four items can apply to your test idea. Now, you can add a hypothesis if you want, if you want to state your reasoning why you think this will happen. But it's actually optional in this situation. And this, this is useful for anyone new to CRO, whether that's yourself or your client or colleague because uh, it helps guide you to build a test which will help you learn, uh, which is the optimal way by far. Without this, if someone new is trying to design a hypothesis and then build a solution, they could actually easily go off course and create a variation which won't produce a learning. So we're going to see it in action. Let's take a look at a real world example. So here's the problem. Uh, and well, the data, let's start with the data. We ran surveys and we learned that low price is very important. So this client is selling perfume. Low price is important to the audience. Now we have this data. We look at the site, look for opportunities, a heuristic analysis, uh, and we notice like with this lens, and we notice, okay, on the, on the product page, we're not actually highlighting the low price very well. We're not showing the discount, not showing the value, the amount saved. So this is now key opportunity. Um, and we know that it's backed by data. So it's worth pulling on this thread and seeing if we can boost customer experience and, perform and KPI performance. So the problem is shoppers love low prices, but we don't actually show it very well. We don't highlight the low price. And Q questions. So we're going to ask, will we get a boost to conversion rate, shopping sale conversion rates, if we actually show the saving in pounds or show it in percent at the product page, and which is best? Here's the solution ideas. Um, very basic test, really. We simply show save 11 pounds or save 50 minus 15%. And here we have very surprising results. We, neither of these won, but we did, we were able to learn. So we learned, you know, that they didn't work, that for some reason they did not resonate with our audience, which is 
a bit obscure. We would expect them to. Um, it could be different theories as to why, perhaps because they pushed content down lower. Perhaps the savings and discount is actually a bit low and it's not not actually a wow kind of a good kind of like amount that's interesting or hits them and resonates. But the important thing is here, we don't stop and move on to the next prioritized test idea. We actually hold pause and think, you know, okay, can we do anything else? Should we iterate? Can we brainstorm a different idea? A few different ideas and then we move um, on to a new iteration new solution so the next iteration we tried we tried three variations here and variation one we had a wild card idea something different we thought well what if we actually just use a label that says on sale so we're not even showing the actual amount but we're showcasing something special related to low price so perhaps this has a chance to resonate with the audience. And this was the winning variation. Uh, we managed to get a 7% uplift in conversion rates uh, with a 96% chance to beat the original via Google Optimize. Again, we know that it actually worked, it resonated with the audience. So we can stop and think, can we double down here? What else can we do? Could we do a different solution of this label? Could we make it highlighted even a bit larger or different color? Give it more visual loudness. Now that we know that this is likely an important element or elsewhere on the site, we could look at the navigation. Perhaps sale isn't highlighted. Perhaps it's deprioritized in the navigation. And now we have data to suggest, to indicate that Reordering and giving more prominence to sale in the navigation could help users find sale items which are important to them and could boost KPIs. So there we have it. And in summary, don't trust surprising data. Remember Twyman's law. And also, momentum is so important it's hard to build so once you've built it don't lose it keep momentum by making small bets when you can small experiments are super useful even if you have a big experiment think how can you do it simply how can you actually create a learning in an easy way to learn what you want to learn there and uh, testing one concept at a time will is the key to testing and learning so essentially you'll never lose it really helps guide you through. Of course, we need to log learnings, use Airtable or whatever works for you. Uh, just be diligent, make sure you log in learnings and it will future proof your CRO program. And of course, brainstorming after a test finishes is a fun spot. You get to take that learning and brainstorm and think, wow, what else can we do here? This is really powerful. And also, bugs you've got to find those bugs you've got to do our diligent QA to take the effort take the time create a good checklist use devices do good QA you'll be grateful you'll get robust tests going out the door it's great and item seven PR your CRO program show the value beat that value drum this can help ensure your program continues in the future and you build awareness educate your audience internally so that they know what you're doing and why and it will help you be able to grow your program when you need to get more resources they could see the value they could see the value to expand the program and item number eight try out the pq framework to help you easily test and learn perhaps you might not need it but perhaps a colleague's new to cro or a client and this can help guide them. So if they have a random test idea, uh, this can help them say, hey, check for data for that idea. And then check your solution answers one question for that idea. And then we can actually roll out a test to learn. We can plan this test, put it in our pipeline, prioritize it, and there we have it. Okay, thanks. Hope you found this talk useful, interesting, got some ideas. 
Uh, if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Twitter. I'm chrismarsh underscore UK. I'm also on LinkedIn. You can search for Data Chris or Chris Marsh CRO. Cheers. Have a good day.